Hey everybody, this is Kyle, and today we're gonna to be talking about the racial wealth gap. And we're looking at MSNBC, the segment about the racial wealth gap and how it relates to the 2020 presidential race, especially in the Democratic side, because racial wealth disparity is such an important thing. But we're gonna go over this and we're gonna look at some things that are very important to how you conduct your personal finances. and. And this will relate to race to a certain degree, but not the way you really think about it. But we're going to go over this video. We're, we're going to skip around. I'm going to turn off the sound because I don't want no copyright anything happening here. But remember, if you like this video, I talk about money and you can subscribe, hit that subscribe button, like this video and share this video as well. So let's get started. So the premise of this video and I'll leave the link in the description down below so you can check the whole thing out. It's about, it's almost six minutes long, but we're not gonna go through all of it. We're just gonna go some of the details about how some of the Democratic candidates for president, those in the, who lean further left than I would like. Um, I like more moderate people, but we're gonna see what the wealth gap is by race because it's a very contentious issue and it is real okay there's studies all over the place and it's real it's not like some fantasy okay and blacks have about one tenth the assets of whites okay and this is by household and you know if i played the sound you can hear um ali velshi talk about this but we're gonna go to 19 seconds and here Okay, so you can see here, it's the source is by the Urban Institute, the median family wealth by race and ethnicity in 2016. And trust me, it's not getting better. Median family wealth. So wealth is assets, I'm assuming minus liability. That's technically net worth. And it's different from income. Income is different because that's what comes in, but wealth is what you keep minus your liabilities. And you can see here, Whites average have about $171,000 in median family wealth. And median is like the most common number, okay? And that's different from the average, obviously. Hispanic, 20,000, 21,000, and black, 17,000. So the problem here is why is this so low for Hispanics and blacks? And that's the main issue here. And when we go through this video, we're going to see several um, Democratic candidates talk about some of the solutions for um, reducing this crazy gap. This is an incredible number. It's, look at this. It's almost, it, look, blacks, it is about one tenth. And Hispanics, you know, a little less and da 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 da. Okay, by. Gender. So we're going to go to the first candidate at 48 seconds, which is, I think it's Senator Cory Booker, and he's running for president. He's from New Jersey, 46. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, here. Here's what his proposals are. $1,000 savings bond for every newborn that can be used as an adult. Okay. It's like some, it's like a sort of a 529 deal and fund grows based on family income, okay? Um, I don't know the exact thing about this. You have to watch the whole uh, video to get the whole details about the second part. But let's talk about the first part because that's what the premise of this thing is. $1,000 savings bond for every newborn. Who's gonna pay for this? Okay, obviously it's gonna be the federal government paying for this. What do we need to do? We cannot get into more debt, okay? The Republicans are not wanting to get into more debt because of this. So what do you have to do? You have to cut government spending. And a lot of people, when they talk about these things, you know, everyone wants free money. That This is a great campaign talking point, but you have to, how are you gonna pay for any of this? And what I have, the problem I have with this is you're giving money to people, especially poor people, okay. Let's take race out for a minute because race does play a factor in this, but it's not the only factor. Why are people in so much debt? Why do they have little to no net worth? It's because they make 
bad financial decisions. And you can blame anyone for that. You can blame yourself for that. You can blame the educational system for that. You know, I can blame both because that's how it is. You know, you really can't change the educational system unless you really get people on board. So you have to look at people who are less well off and it's because of their decisions. It's their decisions to have lots of children when they can't afford having children. It's, and you know, there's different reasons for that. I don't want to get people to get my words twisted on that, but you know, people do make irrational decisions that affect their money down the line. And if you give people a thousand dollars, what are they going to do? They're not going to save it. And this one is kind of all right because it's a 529, it's a 529 similar to that. It's a savings fund. They're not actually giving you cash, but the idea of just giving cash away, which this is not, but the idea of just giving cash, people who have little financial education, it reflects in their net worth and they're just going to spend it. They're not going to save it. So you have to give some leeway, but you, with this program, you'll have to cut some other government programs to fund this because that is a lot of money, a thousand dollars. And it's, it might not seem like a lot of money, but newborns, think about it. Millions of newborns are born every year. That's billions of dollars every year going to this and use as an adult. So I, I don't know how that's going to work. Okay. So we're going to go to a minute 13 and it's, I think Elizabeth Warren, and she's also running for president. And these are mostly um, liberals, very liberal, left-leaning candidates who who want to get elected somehow, and they want to have these very populist views. And it's also a problem in the Republican side as well, the people in the very far right. But this is not a. I can say I can probably say this video is kind of political, but it's more financial than anything else. It just happens to be during the political season, okay? So Elizabeth Warren's education plan, cancel up to $50,000 in student loan debt. Okay, there's some problems with that. We'll benefit 80% of black families and 83% of Latino families. Okay, I don't, um, I don't dispute this second part, okay? I, yes, it'll, I'm sure it'll help a lot of people. It'll help white families, black families, Asian families, and every family who has student loan debt, of course. Now, you cancel $50,000 in student loans. What does that mean? Who gets, who receives, who's the beneficiary of the student loans, okay? So you're, you're going to college, you don't have enough money, you get student loans. There are different ways. There are private lenders who do it, government lenders. Now, I'm assuming she's talking about government, uh, student loan programs because she cannot do that to a private company that is uh, illegal or I mean they could if they change the laws but you wouldn't want that to ever happen to you so you cancel this program okay that means you're gonna start running a massive deficit because you're not getting any money back you're essentially giving away fifty thousand dollars if you cancel up to fifty thousand dollars let's say you borrow a hundred thousand dollars and you just cancel fifty thousand dollars of it Okay, why do, why does the government loan student loans anyway? Okay, to help people get to college so they can be productive members of societies, get a job, pay more taxes, but they also want to return on that loan. You cancel $50,000, that's a lot. I mean, some people's student loans are, you know, 100,000, 200,000, but still 50,000 is still a big amount. And, you know, this may sound nice, and if people with student loans would love this, but to the country as a whole, to our financial system, not in, not when I'm talking about Wall Street or anything, but I'm talking about our government, we're getting in so much debt and we have to cut things. And cutting things are very contentious. You know, Democrats want to cut, you know, military, defense, you know, all those things. And then the Republicans want to cut social programs and all that stuff. And you can't really get anyone to compromise. They should be compromising. This might work, but it's still, you know, just canceling debt is not a great idea when it comes to your finances. Okay. Especially when you talk about, um, the United States as a whole. So, um, there's more about this with Smith Warren and it's at 130. 139, 139, 138. 
Okay, so this is a continuation of our plan. Creates down payment assistance program for first time home buyers. Okay, that's fine. Um, this will help spur the economy. Why do you think um, the Fed, you know, prints more money because it stimulates the economy? This is similar to this because, you know, you get assistance getting your first home, you get your first home, you lend, you borrow from the banks, you borrow from whoever, savings and loans, and then, you know, economic activity happens. So this works. Qualifying home buyers will receive substantial grants. I guess that works. So I need to know the fine details about that. But the first part about canceling student loans is not a great idea. Okay, so lastly, to conclude this video, I want to look at Kamala Harris. And that's at 1.59, two minutes, I guess. Okay, the Lift the Middle Class Act. So. Uh, many of these policies don't directly affect, um, don't directly mention by race, but they do help um, black families, Hispanic families predominantly because they're the ones left behind. Okay, so monthly cash payments to low income. That is a terrible idea. That is a worse idea than Cory Booker's. Benefits up to 60% of black families. Of course it does. I'm sure it does. Uh, who wouldn't benefit from you know, getting a monthly cash payment. But this is probably the worst idea out of this whole video. Monthly cash payments. Okay, as I talked about with uh, Cory Booker, because Cory Booker wants a savings plan. So you don't really touch that money until you're going to college or, or whatever, if you want to start a business. This monthly cash payment is you're just giving money away to people who can't handle their money. You give people monthly cash payments, what are they going to do? Okay, the ones that are well off probably won't notice it or they would or if they're smart with their money they would save it to invest or something like that okay and you know I'm sure she has finer details on this but if there's just monthly cash payments just to do whatever they want with it no strings attached that is a terrible terrible um, thing to do because that is that's a great campaign promise but it's bad for the country it's bad for the people benefiting from it because they're not going to benefit from it they're going to spend you know you give per someone i don't know how much a monthly cash payment is but monthly that's terrible let's say a thousand dollars a month and that's expensive the government will pay for that what does that mean either raise taxes or cut other spending that's the only way or get into crazy debt which we already are which is terrible so monthly cash payments, let's say $1,000 a month. What are people going to do with that who have no money already? They're going to, oh, look, free money. You know, I'm barely getting by, but I'm not going to do this to improve myself. This is an assumption of many people, not just black people, poor white people, poor Asian people, poor Hispanic people. People who are not financially savvy with their money will use it to spend. You're giving away free money essentially even if you raise taxes they're like oh taxes but like still oh i receive money you know it's a hidden cost so all these people buy they'll buy computers they'll buy toys they'll buy you know um disneyland tickets or something i don't know whatever people spend money on you know that doesn't produce an asset and that's a terrible thing to do if you have no strings attached at least the cory booker deal has some strings attached you have you it, you can't touch it I hopefully that's what his um, idea is. You can't touch it until you go to college and you can only spend it on business, uh, college. But this monthly cash payment, it's like, people don't understand that people with not enough money don't think of money as something that will help them grow, make them more money. It's people with the lack of financial education think money is there to be spent and it's not something that you want to do and i hope these people can become a little bit more moderate instead of just playing to the crowd because these are popular things who what who wouldn't want monthly cash payments i would love monthly cash payments and low income especially households okay these are the less educated financially i'm not talking about academically there's a lot of smart people who are low income but financially there's a reason why they're financially 
uneducated and low income. It correlates, it's causation, it's all that stuff, okay? So that's something to think about. That's the end of this video. So if you like this video and wanna see more, hit that subscribe button, like this video, and turn on the notification bell so you stay up to date on when new videos come out. And don't forget to check out my other videos on personal finance, business, and investing. Until next time, I'm Kyle, and thanks for watching.